Hello students, in this video we'll discuss Koshi products. What are Koshi products? Well, formally what would happen if we had series A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus A3 and so on forever, right? And we multiplied that by another series B0 plus B1 and so on forever. Well, what we could do is we can multiply these series out and we can collect them in sort of a nice way. What I can do is I can say, I have to multiply A0 and B0. So I have A0, B0. Those are all the terms whose indices are both zero. Then I could do an A0, B1 or an A1, B0. So I have an A1, B0 plus B1, A0 formally, right? I can get all the terms that have an index of two, and so what will that look like? That will look like an A2, B0, or I can have an A1, B1, those indices add to two as well, B1, A1, plus the last one I can get with the twos are gonna be what? Are gonna be an A0, B2, and then this pattern persists forever, so what would the nth term look like? The nth term in this expression, so the nth term Cn, would look like the sum J goes from zero up to N of Aj, and then B, n minus j, because j plus n minus j exactly gives you n, and we're going to have n plus one of these terms. And so these terms are called the Cauchy products. So these are called Cauchy products. Okay. And so there's a theorem about when if, um, so let me assume this now. So let's state a theorem about Cauchy products. So here's our theorem. If the sum j goes from 0 to infinity of a j converges absolutely, in other words, absolute value has to converge, and if just the sum of the bj's converge, bj converges, just plain old converges, then the sum of the Cauchy products converge. j goes from 0 to infinity of cj converges. And so here's the idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we're going to let, we're going to call the, the sum of the B uh, series just to be B capital, right? And let's let, um, well, we're going to look at the partial sums over here. And so if I look at the partial sums over here, what's going to happen? So if we look at, um, what will we get over here? So let's look at the partial sums. So we can have C0 plus C1 plus all the way down to Cn. It's going to look like what? It's going to look like these expressions over here. It's going to look like A0, B0 plus A1, B0 plus B1, A0, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to the last one, A, N, B0 plus all the way down to B, N, A0. That's the nth partial sum of the C series over here. And so then what's going to happen over here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, what do I have over here? So I really have B0 times, I have a factor of A0 times what? I have A0 times the B partial sum. So all these things over here, let's right way over here. That's going to be A0 times the B partial sums. A0 times the B partial sums up to N plus A1. Now what am I going to have with A1? Well, now the A1... We'll have the partial sums, but I won't get I won't get down to the B n. I'll get down to the B n plus one, right? So what we'll have over here is we're going to have that this is going to be um, B zero plus all the way down to B n minus one, and then finally I'm going to have an A n. And then what do we get with the A n? So the A n only gets a B zero term, right? And B zero. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, well let's define some new numbers. Let's define the tails. So let's define the tails. Let's define beta n to be b minus the b partial sum. So that's going to be minus b0 up to bn. Okay? So those are the tails over here. These are the tails. Great. And so what I have over here now, and this next step over here, is that this is going to be equal to what? This is going to be a0 and then b minus b beta 0, like that. I'm sorry, that's going to be a beta, that's going to be a beta n rather, and not beta 0. So that's going to be a beta n. Let's erase that to do a beta n. Beta n plus a1, b minus beta n minus 1, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to a n, b minus beta 0. Okay? 
So what I have over here is I have the A partial sums times B. So I'm going to write that as, let's call the A partial sums, let's call, um, let's call A n to be A0 plus all the way up to A n. So what I have over here is I have the A n partial sums, A n, partial sums over here, times what? Times... And of course, since the series converges absolutely, the series converges itself, right? Those ANs are times um, B. That's great. That's a term I'd like. And then I have what? Then I have some extra terms over here. So I have A0, B, A1, B, A, N, B. And then the remaining terms are just the A's with the negative BNs, right? So then I have a negative total of A0, beta N, and then A plus A1, beta N minus 1, all the way down to A, N, and then a beta zero over there, okay? So I'm gonna call these terms over here my remainder term because as n goes to infinity, as n goes to infinity, this goes to a times b, which is exactly what we want, just two things. And I would like the Cauchy product to be just a is that some times b, right? So that'd be great if we could prove that. So a n clearly converges to a, a n converges to a. And so that would say that my Cauchy product, these partial sums of the Cauchy products, would converge to just A times B. Beautiful. That means I have to show these remainder terms over here. Remainder terms are N. I like to show those remainder terms are going to zero. So how am I going to show those remainder terms are going to zero? Well, I know that beta N are going to zero. So beta N tend to zero because the B, because um, this series converges, right? So let's let epsilon be greater than zero and pick N capital large enough such that what? Such that beta n, such that the beta n terms over here in absolute value are less than epsilon over, um, well, let's just say epsilon, we'll get some, our final answer will be in terms of the um, convergence, a convergence series over here. Okay, good. And so if we do that, we'll just note that let's let, um, let's let over here a tilde be the sum j goes from 0 to infinity of just the absolute value of aj, which we know converges by the absolute convergence. Okay? Good. And so now what? And so now what can I say? Well, n is fixed. This is a fixed value of n. That's fixed. Okay? And so let me estimate the largest that these rn's can be. So what can rn be in absolute value over here? So rn in absolute value is less than or equal to. Well, I'm going to look at the first terms over here. I'm going to have a beta 0. beta 0 over here, and then that's times a n. Then I'm going to go all the way down to beta n minus 1, and then a, and then I have to subtract off, so I'm going down. So the b, for example, so what will happen is the a, um, the a n has a beta 0, then this is going to be beta n minus 1, and then minus a. So for example, b1 is going to occur with a n minus 1. And so that's going to be a a minus n minus 1, right? And then the beta n terms with the a n minus n all the way down to, all the way down to what? Um, beta n a 0 in absolute value, okay? So we're going to break this into two sums over here, right? So what's going to happen? I'm going to break this sum into two parts. I'm going to say it's less than or equal to the absolute value of this plus this by the triangle inequality. And so now what's happening over here? So all of these things, I can break this. Now these terms over here, I'm going to, just, I'm going to hold on to them. I'm going to, I'm going to let n go to infinity over here in a second. And then what will happen? Okay. So let's, let's look at these terms carefully over here. So these terms over here, are all less than, I'm going to, by, are less than or equal to epsilon times a0 plus all the way down to a n minus n, like that. And so, of course, as n goes to, as um, this is less than or equal to what? As n gets very, 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 very large, as, n, as little n goes to infinity, this expression over here tends to epsilon and then the, my what? My a tilde over here. So that's going to tend to epsilon a tilde as n goes to infinity, and what will happen is n tends to infinity over here. Well, n is fixed in all of these finite terms, and there's a finite number of terms over here. So as n is fixed over here, these finite number of terms are going to zero. So in other words, the limb soup, as n goes to infinity of Rn, absolute value, is less than or equal to epsilon a tilde. So these Rn terms 
can be no, lar no larger than a multiple of epsilon. So in other words, they're arbitrarily small, which means that as n goes to infinity, my cn partial sums, so the conclusion now is that my cn partial sums, c0 plus all the way down to cn, these Cauchy product terms, tend to a times b as n tends to infinity. We've just proven that the Cauchy product converges under the assumption that one of the series converges absolutely and the other series just converges. Thank you very much.